Hey everybody, I'm Jared Sorensen. I'm William DeMille. And uh, we had the privilege of being at the Utah Soil Health Conference um, a week or so ago. We just wanted to make a quick follow-up video to teach three simple soil health principles. And uh, so William will teach a couple of them and I'll teach one of them. And we're here inside this um, wallapini where it's almost tropical, but not quite. That's right. <laughs> not quite. It's what, maybe 10 degrees outside and it's probably a good almost 45 degrees in here. So pretty nice place to hang out on a cool day. That's right. So we'll, why don't we introduce, what's the first principle you want to talk about? We can talk about that here, then we'll go look at the, some of the practical things. Yeah, so one of the main things that I love to do is keep a living root in the soil all the time. So we try to have growing plants here every single day of the year. And we do plant once a month and then we transplant as we harvest so there's never bare soil out here. And that's actually the second principle is never have bare soil. So we do put down compost on the ground and try to keep it two or three inches thick on the soil and then we're always transplanting plants in so that's uh those are the two main things that i love to do it is winter time right now and so we keep this covered on real cold nights so the things don't freeze we can just go ahead and uncover this a little bit these are daikon radishes and you can see that they're blooming and it's almost the last day of february these are blooming gorgeous in here and there were green beans here and the first day that I picked the green beans we already had little tiny daikons coming up and these are the daikons right here so these are for to penetrate down in the ground to get root mass in the ground so that we can keep that living root in there all winter long and we've actually eaten some of these but at this time of year I'm just letting them go to seed because I think it's fun, but they're still pumping carbon into this soil. I'm just going to pull one of these up and let's uh, see what it looks like. So your principle of keeping a living root in the soil obviously applies here in this climate, which is altered quite a bit from what it is outside. Yeah. How does it, how does it apply outside when things go dormant? So I like to have a perennial in the, in the ground outside, something like a, a wheat or an oat or barley or rye. If you're in a really cold climate like we are here, it can get to 20 below here in the winter. Well, I like rye because it won't uh, die. So an, and, an annual, but something that will overwinter. You yeah, mean. so yeah, yeah, right. I said perennial, but okay but it's going through that winter time um season for sure but perennials will do that year after year i do know what a perennial <laughs> is but i just want to point this out so this was going down straight to right here so that's maybe it's at least two and a half inches probably three inches and then it starts getting really jagged see this s shape that's in here so this S shape is showing us that this is trying to penetrate through a hard pan. So it hit the hard pan right here. And that's about the depth of my uh, compost. And then it, that soil, we've not tilled this uh, for a year now, year and a half almost. Um, and we'll never till it again in here, but it did hit that hard pan. So the heavy clay soils in here have compacted and so we need to be growing roots like this continually so that we don't develop these hard pans. Awesome. You see that? Okay, so the principle that I wanted to talk about is diversity. Oftentimes in modern agriculture, to improve efficiency, we want a monoculture. That means like a single species over acres and acres. That improves our efficiency of planting, harvesting, herbicide and uh but the the challenge is is we also sacrifice the level of soil health when we are looking at just one species and it makes it more susceptible to pests so with what william has done here in this wallapini which granted it is you know a controlled environment it's not like it's necessarily out in the elements but the same principles apply here on a small scale as they do on a large scale so just i mean curious William, how many you have an idea within a range how many different species do we have growing in this uh 3500 square foot 
space here? Probably 20 species. Okay, so 20 species. So right here, I can look at a cover crop, which has three species, cereal rye, vetch, and daikon radishes. And where Williams cut the radishes and removed it out to be able to compost it. He left the roots in the, in the soil to be able to decompose, to be able to feel or uh, feed the microbiology. And then over here we've got, so this is, this is just feeding the soil. The radishes are obviously edible, but that's not the purpose for planting them. And then we've got, you know, two different species here. We've got what some people might call weeds, um, but it is sequestering carbon. It's pumping sugar and carbon down into the soil. It's feeding the soil microbiology. And so as William pointed out, as long as it doesn't go to seed, it's our friend because it is providing cover. And if you just look down these rows, you've got lots of different species. Here it is the end of February and we've still got green things growing year round. So diversity above ground, diversity, that means there will be diversity below ground and diversity in the microbiology. Um, and William can talk more about the different key species. I know how to identify earthworms. I don't know how to identify anything else unless it's a mushroom and I know that's a fungus and we do have that in here. Um, but bacteria, protozoa and all the other good creepy crawly things that you can't see to the naked eye. Um, if you have proper diversity above ground, you know it's going to be there. Doesn't mean you don't check for it, right? But that's the, that's the idea. So monocultures, they mine nutrients from the soil, they're chemical fertilizer dependent. And uh, while they may be more efficient, they are not going to feed soil health like a polyculture or multi-species. So diversity is super important when it comes to soil health. Okay, the other big soil health principle that I love is keeping the ground covered. And there's two ways that I like to keep it covered. One is with a living plant. So that's what we've got here that we just talked about with the cover crop. This is the same cover crop that we would use in an outside system. It's super fun because everything outside is covered with snow, but in here, this uh, is starting to bloom. The daikons are blooming, this hairy vetch is blooming. So it's really fun at this time of year. But this keeps the soil completely covered. And so the microbes are gonna be happy, they're gonna be healthy. If it gets too cold, they're protected. If it gets too hot, they're protected. So it's keeping the home really good for these guys. And they're being fed from all of the living roots. So they have food, water, and shelter. And so they're gonna work hard for us. If we go over here, we look right under these broccoli plants. Uh, we have a lot of compost on the soil. So this is the second way that we cover the soil is with this compost. And the compost is a source of food. This is organic matter. And this will also keep it from getting too hot or too cold. So whether it's uh, the compost covering the soil or a living plant covering the soil, we're keeping it completely covered. And if you come up here, this is where we're gonna be planting our onions right here. So I have recently harvested crops out of here. And so I didn't uh, keep the, I didn't make it so it was bare soil all the time. I'm keeping this covered with compost. But the roots won't be growing in here for another couple of weeks until I get the onions planted. So you wanna keep the roots growing as much as possible, but I didn't have time to plant another crop but I didn't want to get the onions planted too early or they would go to seed on me. So sometimes you have a, a break in the season where you may have a month or two or weeks where it's between crops. So I just cover it with the compost. So that's the answer to that. And then the one last uh, example, right here, these, uh, these kale plants are 14 months old. We planted these way last year. And so, and I've been putting a little bit of compost on here. You don't want to put too much compost or too good of compost on the brassica family. Because if you do, then, and the mycorrhizal fungi gets going, it can treat brassicas like a disease. Uh, because brassicas are an early succession plant. But underneath here, 
we've put the the brand new uh, kale plants in here. So in another two or three months, these are gonna get to the point where they're not as good because the leaves are getting old. But these will be up, and as soon as these little ones on the ground get big enough to start harvesting, and we're, we wanna eat those, then I will just take a pair of pruners and I'll cut these old plants out. And then those ones underneath is, will be what we eat for the next year. But so there's just different ways of covering the soil, either with living plants or with compost or a combination of both. Awesome. So just one question. I know probably people are wondering and I'm wondering. So on this section where you did compost, how do you do that at a scale? You know, when you've got a hundred or a thousand acres, um, when you take a crop out, what's uh what do you what do you see as a solution for like or larger scale farmers? Yeah, so anything that's not a little garden, you would grow a cover crop outside and you just um, roll it down with a roller crimper. That's the main thing to do. Uh, the one place I haven't figured that out is on rangeland, where you have big boulders and other obstructions. But if it's in any, any kind of a developed a field, like a pasture or a cropland, just uh, between crops, I would just grow cover crops and then roll them down roller camper and that keeps that mulch on the soil awesome so not necessarily the compost wouldn't be practical but um uh other solutions like compost teas and extracts and things to be able to to introduce biology is something that we've experimented with you want to speak on that for just a minute yeah for sure like say you had a thousand acre ranch and it's uh and you're and you need to get that biology in there then you would make some compost piles and then you make a compost extract and you take your tractor through and you um, just chisel in the the extract and the extract is going to be full of the right amounts of bacteria fungus protozoa beneficial nematodes and maybe microarthropods depending on how good your compost was but if once you get those things in there, you get that complete soil food web into the soil, it will flourish and be beautiful. And then you can start saving money on all of the man-made inputs that we're doing. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. We got Weston here with us. Um, so just in conclusion, so the, the three, or the soil health principle I talked about was diversity. Um, diversity above ground in in the crops that you grow and that'll provide for lots of diversity below ground in the micro microbiology and William talked about the two principles of keeping a living root in the soil and keeping the soil covered yep so we know that this is an all-inclusive um, we want to invite you to come and join us this summer for some learning experiences we've got various classes internships um, gardening boot camp. So I'll talk a little bit about the classes that I'm heading up. Um, there are four different classes sponsored by the Savory Institute. We're going to talk uh, in the first one about grazing and specifically about building a grazing plan. We'll go into the financial side. Ecological monitoring will be the third one. And then the fourth one that I believe is in October is on more of the land planning. So just kind of taking your, taking your ranch putting a map on there and maybe even disregarding all the current infrastructure and you just kind of build the ranch that you want you overlay that and then you see maybe it fits with what you have maybe it doesn't but the reason that I like to do that is because it gives you a lot more ability to create and just maybe think and not be so constrained about where you build fences and put in water troughs and um, how to be able to maybe irrigate more effectively and those kind of things so so those will be the classes and then we also have a ranch internship opportunity so i think we have um, uh, one person committed so we have at least one more opening on that opportunity to come and work as an intern on the on the cattle and the more of the production side so what do you got going on william we're gonna do uh feed your family boot camp you'll be here for three days and we will teach you everything you need to know to have a big beautiful garden to uh, produce a majority of food for your family. And the other thing is we have a 17 week program where people can come here and live on site. You can bring your own RV and you can live here. We do have some limited housing available also, 
but that is throughout the growing season and it's focused on the vegetable production and we will be teaching you the production so that when you go home you could start your own food producing business um, you could either be a person who creates just one um, type of a, a crop maybe that needs to go into your local food system or a multitude of vegetable crops that's up to you what you grow but we will teach you the basics of how to do it yep had good good results from the class that william taught last year people went home and they actually grew things yep. so it's a good thing so we invite you to to check it out reach out to us if you have additional questions um, but thanks thanks a lot for jumping on this video and watching it with us and we hope that you'll continue your soil health journey whether it's with us or whether it's on your own there's lots of resources out there and if we can help we would love to help that's right thank you